Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. I recently installed some solar panels in my garden and I've got them grid tied to the mains. I want to do some tests on my electric meter without touching it, of course, because it's not my property, it belongs to the electric company. To do some tests, I've got a digital meter or an electronic meter and I've got this old analog meter. I've been using this one for quite a while now to test appliances in my house and I've just got it rigged up with a, an outlet and an inlet or a plug. But for this experiment, what I'm gonna do is have one of them after the other, so in series. So first of all, let's plug this one in. Do a nice wet plug here. There we go. Let's see if this one wakes up. Looks like something's happening. So this one came with the solar panel system. 18696.3, so it has a decimal. This is an Elster A100C. I don't believe this was ever supplied by an electric electricity company. I think it was supplied with a solar company. The sticker is missing now. So 18696.3 is the amount of electricity that the solar panels presumably have generated, although that seems to differ from what was on the solar inverter. So this number might be how much has been fed into a grid uh, after the house has taken what it was going to take off it. So one. 18696.3 and over here it is 76967.6 between 6 and 7. So over here behind I've got a convection heater which is probably 2 or 3 kilowatts. The rating plate's gone off the back of it but I like this one. It works well. It should be wall mounted but I've got it up off the floor to let the air through. So when I plug it in this should flash it's meant to have one watt hour per pulse, and this is meant to have 375 revolutions of the disc per kilowatt hour. Now that's not quite as straightforward. But let's tilt this forward. So when I plug this in, this should start spinning. Yeah, it's spinning. This should take a moment to wake up, but then it should start flashing. And I don't know if you can see that, but it is flashing. Yeah, you can just about see it. It's quite dim, that one. Let's pop it up on a torch. But what I'd like to do is now reverse the direction on both at the same time. And what I think is going to happen is this one may or may not run backwards. I don't know. This one, instead of demonstrating a pulse that's flashing with the amount of electricity used, it should demonstrate or, or display a solid red. This meter, I've read the manual for it, I've read some of the manual. It's configurable insofar as uh, you can have it as an import-export meter, so it can have kilowatt hours and import and export, but when the sticker is just white like this, I think all it does is tell you kilowatt hours. This is an LG type CH1. I don't know if you can see, it's written just there, CH1, E-L-G-E-E. -E. And this was the property of the Northwestern Electricity Board. I presume this came out of a skip. So let's shut it off, swap the direction of everything, and see what happens. So we're plugged out. We'll plug out this side as well. And what we're doing here really is just simulating a reverse flow condition. We're going to attempt to do that. And I guess in the past you could have done that with a diesel generator in the days before solar panels. If you were so inclined. Live and neutral should still stay on the same sides. The other thing that I've noticed is that you can have a thing or a legend where on the display it says or lowercase or capital E lowercase D. I guess that's just so that you can spell it out in those eight character numbers, letters and numbers. Uh, that's why it's lower and higher case, but it spells out red and it's reverse energy direction, I think. And that just lets the electricity company know that power has gone the wrong way and that whoever's been playing with it has been messing I guess 
lesson is not the right word, but I think if you were running a generator or something and pumping it back into the system, and you see that, you know, if you were just putting a generator on, that's bad news because that could put energy into a system that's gone dead. So if the if the grid went dead and then you're firing up your house without isolating the house from the supply, there's the potential that somebody working on it could get could get a hop or a neighbor who wasn't expecting it could get electricity or it could wreck some electronics. I'm not sure if it really could, but that's what they say. That's loose. Okay, tighten it up. Is it loose? No, it's not. Okay, we're re almost ready to go. But with the modern solar inverters or with solar inverters that are compliant with the regulations, I don't know what those are called, but there's regulations for it, they will automatically shut off if there's no grid, if there's no supply of electricity on the grid side, so that you can't have this situation where you're generating and feeding into a grid that isn't live. Let's plug this in. Now, what's going to happen? It's coming on. We're not drawing any power yet. Immediately, it's got a solid red for the reverse energy direction issue. But I'm interested to see what will happen with my analog meter. So let's plug in the load. Oh, it actually does spin backwards. That's quite amazing. So before I started, it was halfway between six and seven. So it probably used about 0 0.04 of a kilowatt hour there. And that was in about five minutes. So let's see if the meter drops back down again or if it's got some kind of a latch. So it's definitely clear that the power is flowing the wrong direction here, indicated because they see the arrow there from here to here. But the red line's going the wrong way now. Over here, it's got a solid red but I don't think that number will come down. There is a chance on some meters that this number will keep going up, but I'm not entirely sure that they really exist. It's a rumor off the internet, so that's why I want to do this experiment. My worry is that I'm feeding into the grid and then going to get billed for it because my meter doesn't comply. And in that case, I want to have a meter, potentially this one, working just the wrong way on the system. So from the solar panels into the house or just at the other end of the grid, and what I might do, I've looked at them as well on, online, for about 30 or 40 quid, you can buy a two-way meter. So it's an import-export meter, and I can just piggyback that on top of the one I have, and I can watch what's happening. Presumably, the one that I buy is more modern. Yeah, that's dropping straight off if you watch this, this needle here. It is actually going backwards. The issue with that, of course, is if this was your main meter... And the meter reader comes out and sees that you've used less electricity than last time well then you could be in a pickle because they wouldn't like that so then they'd want you to buy a smart meter maybe not buy but they'd want to give you a smart meter and if they give you a smart meter well then where does that leave you so for a two kilowatt hour heater this should step on one unit every half hour and this should step on one unit potentially every three minutes so we'll go from six to seven or seven to six every three minutes Likewise, the decimal here, the decimal unit should go on every three minutes. So I'll leave it for a while, maybe 10 minutes, and come back and see. This one has should have gone down. This one should just stay the same, hopefully, if that's all it's recording. So in about 10 minutes, it's gone from 6 down to about 3, and it is moving. I've been watching it here. It's moving quite slowly. But it's not moving as fast as I thought it would. So I'm guessing that this heater is a two kilowatt heater because it's got two elements on and it's a big convector heater. So a two kilowatt heater burning for an hour should burn two kilowatt hours. That's my logic. So burning for 30 minutes should be one kilowatt hour. So it should jump one of these divisions every hour or ten of the, one of these every half hour or one full revolution of this every half hour. So because this is divided by 10, it should take three minutes to go from one of these to one of these. Well, maybe that's right, actually. Ah, because it's one tenth per division. OK, so it is. It's taken three minutes per division. So that's correct then. OK. I've got it. I've got it now. Meanwhile, over on this meter, this hasn't changed at all. So while it's gone down 0.4 at this point, 0.4 of a kilowatt hour, 
this one here hasn't changed at all. It's just constant. So I think that's the experiment through then in that case. I'm working it out as I go. So I think what I've learned from this experiment is obviously that this meter runs backwards and this one doesn't, but it tells you with a solid light. It took me about an hour of reading the internet to get to the same conclusion, um, but still not knowing whether this one would or would not go backwards. Like they could have a latching mechanism that stops the meter running backwards. What's the point, Owen? What I've learned is that by doing this experiment in maybe 15, 20 minutes, I've got my head around it. Bit of wire, plugging something in, using a very modest amount, probably about six pence of electricity to figure it out. And I figured it out and I kind of have learned something from it. Whereas to try and trawl through the internet looking for the manual for Elster A100C and then read and you've got five variations of it and all this other stuff, it's simpler just to plug it in and let loose. And if it blew up, well, it blew up, but odds are things tend not to blow up. So what am I gonna do with this system then? What I could do is put this one to count the power coming out of the inverter going into my house and into my consumer unit. That won't tell me very much because there's already a counter in the inverter, only that the counter in the inverter doesn't qualify for metering purposes for the feed-in tariff. That's the only difference as far as I can tell. So by putting this there, it would just validate what the inverter tells me. What I would like to know is how much energy I'm generating, how much energy I'm importing from the grid and how much I'm exporting. At the moment, I can see from the inverter how much I'm generating and I can see from my house meter, which is not this one, it's the one on the wall at my consumer unit, how much I'm importing but I can't see how much I'm exporting. So I could put this one in the wrong way around directly after the meter that I have, and that looks like it would be okay. And it would flash to count up just the exported energy, not the energy I've used in my house. And then I could do a sum to see the difference between the inverter and the export meter to see how much I'm using of my own electricity. And then the old house meter, the original one, would tell me how much I'm buying from the grid. And this one would then tell me how much I'm donating to the grid as well. Or I could buy an import-export meter for fun. I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. Any ideas, questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching. See you later.